weather today is really, really beautiful. I don't know, I've been feeling a little bit like down this week. I think maybe it's just sort of like I've lost a bit of my purpose. <laughs> like I think this happens a lot to students in the holidays. And you just find it hard to keep up with stuff because you have no routine anymore and you've kind of lost your purpose, what you were trying to do. And I'm wondering about what I should do, what I should film. Hmm. I feel like I have to kind of like get out and show you something really awesome and then I'm just- I, I think maybe I might just sort of film myself just sort of existing for a bit because I don't want to like take the genuineness out of it by pretending to be upbeat when I'm not, you know? Because, I mean, I don't- I'm, I'm a person and I don't feel fantastic all the time and that's fine. I used to have like quite a lot of hobbies, like I used to like riding my bike and I no longer have a bike. Um, I used to really like art but like these days it's very very hard because when you're an adult you constantly want to be improving. Everything you do you want to know it's going towards a sort of greater goal that you have set in your mind and so it's harder to just sort of free your mind and draw and not really care about how it comes out. When I was a kid I didn't care but nowadays whenever I draw something I feel like it has to be perfect. I guess maybe this is what Mickey means when he says like you get to see a more one of another side of me a slightly more sort of intimate side of me maybe. I'm gonna go jogging just to try and lift up my mood a little bit. To be honest, I'm expecting that it's just gonna result in me being in the same mood but just slightly more tired. me that they want to hear like more stories about like the daily life of a foreigner sort of in Korea I guess and I do want to do some more stuff about that um, so today I thought I'd tell you like a little funny story about something that happened when I went to Myeongdong yesterday so yesterday I'm walking around in Myeongdong just kind of looking to buy this one cosmetic product that I'm looking for for the whole day and like I've run into a few like scammy people why like whenever i go to myeongdong i just run into some absolute weirdos i ran into these two culty people and then later on i swear to god it was the same woman and then a different guy who were just like oh we we are collecting for the for the poor harmonies and harabojis and i was just like yeah, I'm sure you are with your absolutely zero charity ID or anything or, you know, <laughs> any sort of proof aside from some pictures of some people in a hospital on your phone that you're actually doing this legitimately. But anyway, so I was kind of a bit wary already of people trying to, like, come up to me, especially as a foreigner, because they, th they come up to foreigners because they're just more likely to sort of <laughs> to, I guess to sort of succeed in whatever they're planning to do with them. Not even like, sometimes it's not even like people who are doing something like shady, it's often just leaflet people. Leaf like leaflet people will either completely avoid foreigners or exclusively target foreigners, I guess depending on what they're leafleting. So I've had people literally shove leaflets like directly into my face. Like this, I've been walking along and just going hmm hmm hmm, like that! And it's just absolutely crazy, like, I don't want to go to your restaurant, just leave me alone, okay? <laughs> just please. Yeah, but this is actually the story of the, the first and only person who's ever recognised me from YouTube and asked for a picture with me, which was something I was not at all ready for or used to. But obviously I'm not, I'm gonna be polite about it, so I basically I have been recognised off of YouTube in real life three times. There was one woman who worked at the Olympic merchandise store. Um, 
there was another person, there was a couple of young people in Hewa who recognised me uh, outside of a laundrette and then <laughs> there was this time which was this, um, I was just walking along in Myeongdong and I sort of see a, a sort of middle-aged Asian man just sort of in my peripheral vision just sort of waving at me and I'm like, I don't want your leaflet dude <laughs> I instantly just start going, I, I don't, I don't I don't want it because <laughs> I think I presume he's going to try and sell me something give me a leaflet or make me donate to a bullshit charity so I and I, so I sort of see him coming and um and I take my earphones out and he and he's like hey you're you're from YouTube right from YouTube you're your you're thing and I'm just like oh it oh it's somebody who does this okay yeah sure I'll meet you and um he was actually an Asian American uh and so he has like his wife and his two teenage sons or adult sons there with him and so he's he's like really excited he's like hey it's you and then he's like to his wife and his sons and he's like yeah it's thing it's thing from the korean guy's youtube channel you know her and they're looking at him like no we don't <laughs> it's it's just this this guy's two sons and the wife going what <laughs> Who who is this girl that you've just suddenly stopped out of nowhere? And he's just like and he just comes up to me like, hey, he was really lovely. He was very nice and everything. <laughs> and he was just going up to me like, hey, it's you, it's it's Marie, right? It's Marie. And I'm I'm not gonna embarrass I'm not gonna embarrass this guy. So I'm just like, yeah, sure, I'm Marie, nice to meet you. <laughs> uh and that was, and yeah, he asked me to take a photo with him, and that's the that's the first time anyone ever asked me to take their photo, and I was, I was surprised, but still very, and but very sort of flattered. That that was very lovely, <laughs> and I'm very sorry if he ever watches this and feels silly for getting my name wrong. Uh, but don't like, literally, it's fine. Like you, you can call me whatever you want, Marie, Mary, <laughs> you know, like. Maurice. <laughs> just, just anything. You can call me anything, it's fine. <laughs> so, since we're having a kind of slow week, I decided to just make a sort of list of some of the things I'm going to miss about Korea when I go back and also some of the things that I'm going to really <laughs> look forward to about going back to England. And this is not like my be all end all list of stuff, this is just kind of like stuff that I've spontaneously come up with just throughout the day. So number one is cheapness. Things in Korea are a lot cheaper than things in the UK. Everything from clothing to food to train tickets just a lot of it is just so much cheaper especially the train tickets actually so number two is saunas <laughs> this might be kind of a surprise but i actually really really love going to like saunas and ginger bangs and it's like i know that it's public bathing and it's public bathing is kind of not really a thing that like we do in europe like we don't really ever get naked in public but you get over it surprisingly quickly. And number three is that Seoul has really, really, really good public transport compared to Sheffield, which is the city that I live in, in the United Kingdom. In Sheffield, outside of the apartment where I used to live, outside of my student dormitory, there was a bus stop. It had no board telling you when the bus is gonna, which, how far away the bus is. It had no list of which buses stopped there and it had no information about where the buses that stop here go. Like, it literally, it was literally just a shelter with a bench. That was, that was how little information there was. So if this bus is going to Brumhall, does that mean it's going to stop at the students union on the way or is it going to take a different route? I don't know. You just have to guess. This one is a bit of a weird one. This is foreigner. This is one thing that kind of has its advantages and its disadvantages. Being a foreigner in Korea. Being a foreigner is kind of like you're different. <laughs> you're different, but we kind of are interested in you because of that. Like 
the reason that the majority of people who watch this channel are Korean and you know that's kind of it's very interesting to me because I guess they don't really know a lot about people who come from abroad to Korea or why we do that. You're considered to be something a bit sort of special and interesting but at the same time you are not sort of you're kept sort of separate from the rest of mainstream Korean society and I'm fine with that mostly like I'm I've put myself in this situation that's something that I kind of am going to miss and I'm not going to miss at the same time um, so the next one is safety this is definitely not a nuanced point Korea Seoul is so so much safer than any city in the United Kingdom anything from like little things like I can leave my bag on a table at Starbucks while I go to collect my order and nobody's going to steal it nobody's going to attack me yeah I'm safe and it's it's not like that in the in a lot of the western world for people who've never been there like I would have to pretend to be on my phone if I was walking back to my house at night when I lived in Sheffield. I haven't been yelled at anything, like nobody's like yelled at me like, hey sexy or something like that. I have been yelled at in the street in Britain, but that has never happened to me in Korea. That's not to say I haven't met some creepy people while I've been in Korea, because I have, and I might tell you about them one day. And the last one is my friends. <laughs> I'm going to miss my friends that I have in Korea and that are not coming back with me uh, to England because the majority of my friends are on the same course as me so they're coming back. They're coming back to the United Kingdom and I'll see them again in classes but people like Mickey and Art and Kenny, I'm not going to be seeing them for probably a long time when I go back to the UK because my situation is that I still have two more years of my degree that I have to do. I still have to study at university for two more years until I graduate, because I graduate in the year 2020. So yeah, that, that might be a bit, that's going to be a bit sad, but I hope that we can sort of keep up. And I'm definitely hoping that I can come back to Korea during the summer holidays or the spring holidays, <laughs> vacation time. <clears throat> to see everybody but yeah and I just wanted to say you know a big big thank you to Mickey and like everyone else that's sort of been sort of like very there for me while I've been in Korea and yeah because they you have you, you've been there for me in a lot of ways <laughs> I wouldn't have been able to do a lot more things if it wasn't for you guys and you don't even know but yeah that's how it is This is the worst drawing of the United Kingdom I've ever seen. And for stuff that I'm looking forward to when I get back to England, probably one of the big ones is going to be clothing that actually fits. <laughs> like, um, so clothing is very cheap in Korea and you know that's a really good thing but a lot of the clothes that I see are either sort of very very different styles to what I kind of prefer to wear or they seem kind of the wrong fit for somebody with my body shape because obviously I don't think I need to explain this in too much detail but I have a different body shape than <laughs> maybe maybe most of the population of Korean women do um, so sometimes for me finding clothes that are gonna fit and look good on my body can be very difficult actually when I first came to Korea I heard that Korean clothing was kind of cheap and fashionable so I was just like yeah yeah this is gonna be so great and then I was kind of a bit disappointed by what I saw I was just kind of a bit sort of like oh right that looks really conservative and old-fashioned <laughs> and it's not to say that having conservative you know conservative uh, fashion trends or that having a more conser place where people dress more conservatively is wrong I know I shouldn't care but I do <laughs> and that's the thing that's what makes me uncomfortable with it I feel like a lot of the stuff I brought over from England a lot of the clothes 
that I brought over I can't wear here which is a real shame because I like those clothes and so pretty much everything I wear in Korea now is stuff that I bought in Korea going from one perceived idea of beauty to another perceived idea of beauty is quite an adjustment to make in your mind and it can often make you feel quite bad about yourself so the next one is air quality Britain does not have as big a problem with air quality pollution and especially things like misemanji than Korea does. The next one is diversity and this is going to be the one that's kind of the opposite to what I said earlier, the opposite of the positive sides of being awake and is the downsides of it because I'm very happy to go back to a place with a lot more diversity so that I can see, so that, like I can just sort of be like, I am just one of a diverse and colourful range of people of all the ethnicities in the world that have come together here. I am not special in any way and you don't need to pay any special attention to me. The next one is English. <laughs> I will be very, very happy to be able to have the English language back as my main form of communication with the outside world. With, with the language gap, with, without my ex without excellent language skills, I feel like I can't do stuff like when the society's fair was happening at my university, I felt like I can't go and join a society. Being able to just take that stress off from me and being able to say, this is a place where I know exactly how to communicate with everybody, that's going to be a big relief. So the next one is European food! I miss my European food so much and by European food I mean the sort of things that you don't really get in Korea so not pizza or anything like that I mean I miss like you walk into a supermarket in Britain and there's just a whole bread aisle with all the different kinds of breads and it's so it's so so much better like oh Jesus and the last one which I'm going to explain very quickly because I'm running out of storage space is individuality and freedom in society and how I conduct myself. In my country, I have the understanding that I am an adult and no, my parents, my government, my country do not control me or do not have a say in how I conduct my life, you know, outside of things like the law. I know that when it comes to decisions about myself, I have total and ultimate sort of control over how that happens. Uh, when my dad did his interview with Mickey and he's just kind of like, yeah, well, in our society, we don't really have, we don't really sort of oppose our children's, you know, boyfriends and girlfriends like that. We can't just say, oh, I don't, I don't like this one, get rid of him. And I was um, trying to think of what uh, qualifications to do to get into university. I was like, dad, you know, what university course should I do? What, what job should I get? And he just said, I, I can't make that decision for you. You have to do that. You know, do whatever you want. Each person is their own individual, individual that's going to go off in their own individual direction. One thing that Mickey often talks about is he does feel kind of a bit uh, sort of restricted and frustrated by the sort of culture of soul that, you know, there's this sort of one perfect path to success and you have to do it, you know, otherwise, you know, that's, that's basically the only way to have a good and successful life. He's currently making videos now about how, you know, he wants to follow people who follow their own paths, you know, whereas in the West we kind of have the thing of, you know, there's nothing to do but follow your own path, you know, we can't tell you how to live, you've got, you're an individual, decide that for your bloody self. I like that culture of being able to know that I, ultimately, I have to answer to no one except myself. You know, not my boss, not my parents, not anybody, except myself in how I conduct my life. And I, I do like that idea definitely a lot more than sort of, um, while a much more strict hierarchical system like Korea does have its, its bonuses with everyone sort of feeling a lot more cohesive maybe, if you're somebody who maybe can't fit into that ideal for whatever reason, it's more likely that you're going to be pushed outwards and rejected. And so it's very, <laughs> it's, it, it's a very sort of complicated issue that takes a lot more sort of processing and research than I have time to do right now. But, you know, one day I, I definitely will talk about all of these things more in the future, if that's the sort of thing you guys want. <laughs>